J.P. Morgan's chief global market strategist Marco Kalanovic remains bullish, out with a new note today saying that a near-term rally is likely. Marco joins us exclusively on the phone this afternoon. It is great to talk to you again, Marco. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Carl. Uh, part of your argument involves just tactically the way tax payments uh, and seasonality goes in the latter half of April. Can you just mention that? Yeah, of course. So the first two weeks in April are historically weak uh, um, uh, for the equity performance. Some of it can be attributed to that basically investors need to raise some cash to pay uh, to pay the taxes. And last year uh, there were strong gains, so we think that was the case this year. And then if you look at the the, the last two weeks in April, it tends to be the, the the best performing two weeks, actually second best performing. You know, but there is a pretty clear reversal. You know, first two weeks, and then the last two weeks of April. So that could play a role, we think, uh, but there are also other factors which, which we think um, uh, could uh, push the market higher, at least short term here. And you seem relatively agnostic about whether you buy growth or value in the near term. Why is that? No, so so we we have actually pointed that number of value stocks are now becoming growth. You know, so specifically if you look at the energy and materials, you know they they are still value. Their valuations are cheap in historical terms. They are cheap relative to the the average of an index. However, the earnings are growing. Uh, so these are also now growth stocks. Balance sheet quality is improving. So they're also quality stocks. And also there is a positive price momentum. So we basically highlight what historically were just value stocks. Now they're actually value and growth. Um, that's on a sort of cyclical side. And then we also highlight similar group of stocks on a growth side. Uh, some of the growth stocks sold off pretty dramatically in the last three months. You know, we highlight, for instance, China ADRs that are now trading at a multiples, uh, which are basically value multiples. So one doesn't have to pick value or growth. Actually, there are plenty of stocks which are at the same time value and growth now. Marco, you were relative. You were very early, actually, in warning the market about the trajectory of rates, and we've moved a lot. You say uh, too much is priced in now, and that we may level off given underappreciated base effects and perhaps some demand slowdown. Is that sort of what you think Evans and Bostic are talking about today? Maybe backing off from the Bullard 75 basis point kind of thing. You know, so there is a lot of talk from the Fed, you know, in the last few months there was a lot of sort of scaring, uh, Fed scaring the market, you know, so a lot has been priced in on the rates. You know, if you look at the 10-year at 295, basically, it's basically slightly above our year-end price target, you know, so we think probably that's done. Same if you look at the two-year, even today, two-year moved like 15 bips, that, that 15 bips, that's almost a hike. So I think it's a little bit overdone at this point. I think we might be surprised uh, to see yields leveling off here and maybe even drifting slightly lower as we go later um, later in the year towards the election in the late summer.